Cooler Master is bold enough to claim that their Zornit 2 is, and I quote, the best optical gaming mouse designed for claw grip. Well, is it? The Zornit 2 from Cooler Master comes packaged in a sleek black box with the front flap that opens to show the mouse. While it is, at its heart, a gaming mouse, the packaging lends itself to a much more professional look. The front of the box shows off the mouse and the fact that it supports full RGB lighting on the mouse wheel since these days you just can't get away from RGB. The rear of the box has several sleek shots of the mouse as well as a full feature set listed in 8 different languages. Just look for the one that you can read and go with that one. Being that the Zornit 2 is designed entirely for claw grip, you'll find that it's significantly smaller in height and length when compared to more common sized mice such as the SteelSeries Sensei and the Rocket Tyon. It is however a bit wider to make use of the side grips. The build of the Zornit 2 is extremely solid, and since it's designed to be clutched like the prey of an eagle, it has a soft rubber side grips on either side of it so that it's easier to grasp with your thumb and pinky. They've included a nice resting place for your ring finger so that it has something to do while you're gaming. Unlike most gaming mice, the Zornit 2 isn't slathered with features that you'll most likely never use. It however comes with 7 fully programmable buttons. A navigation buttons on the side, right, left, and center clicks, as well as your scroll wheel, and DPI up and down selections. Included in those 7 buttons is the main right and left click that Cooler Master decided to equip with 5 million click rated Omron switches. On top of the mouse they've placed the up, down, DPI selection buttons that come with presets to 500, 1250, and 3500 dpi. While some have reported that their right left mouse buttons generating a squeaking sound, after a week of use ARDS did not exhibit this. Perhaps it's been remedied into this latest revision. But what does the dpi matter without a good sensor? The Zornit 2 was designed around the Avago 3320 optical sensor with the adjustable DPI ranging from 500 to 3500. It's flanked on the front and back by two of the mouse by very large Teflon pads that make the movement across a soft pad as almost as slick as ice. All of the adjustments to the mouse take place within a very lightweight but extremely difficult to read software from Cooler Master. Seriously guys, I get that the gray on black looks cool, but it's a bit difficult for us to read. Right off the main control you have two options, one for OS sensitivity for modification of the USB polling rate from 125Hz to 1000Hz as well as the OS sensitivity, double click speed, but and button response times. The other tab gives you access to all 7 buttons to customize to your heart's content. The LED tab allows you to assign color patterns to each DPI selection with full RGB as well as effects allowing you to have a visual cue for each setting that you make. The sensor tab gives access to each DPI level selected for full adjustability to one of the three adjustable selections, as well as the ability to adjust the lift off distance of the mouse to what suits you and your surface the best. Now with an MSRP of $34.99, it really is kind of hard to find any faults with this mouse. The biggest drawback would have to be its unique size and shape, as it leaves palm grippers feeling like their fingers are falling in front of the mouse. I am, or better yet, was predominantly a palm style gamer until using this mouse. Now the sensor is responsive and never gave me any issues and I actually found my accuracy increasing immensely over my now retired Rocket Tyon. The left right mouse buttons were responsive but rather sensitive for those who rest their fingers on the buttons, you may find yourself with the occasional misfire. The scroll wheel is smooth enough but it does have audible clicks when you roll it quickly. The DPI selection buttons are well placed and have a satisfying click to them but the navigation buttons on the side leave a bit to be desired as they feel a bit spongy. Now is it the best? It's hard to say. It's good for sure. But with peripherals such as this, there's so much subjectivity it's hard to give it a solid the best or the worst. One thing that I can say is for the price point, it's absolutely worth a look. And that's been our review here at WCCF Tech TV. Feel free to subscribe, like, or leave a comment, and we'll see you guys in the next one.